uh, be confident in yourself, uh, be positive, because you never know uh, what will happen in the future. You will definitely have your ups and downs, and mm -hmm. uh, you will never know where you will find your treasure. And uh, plan, uh, a better plan in the closest future. Have a plan, but uh, be flexible and always be positive. Uh, never, ne never think that uh, something went wrong. Uh, even if something went wrong, it's a lesson and you need to, to study something. Hey everyone, this is Devin Miller here with another episode of The Inventive Journey. I'm your host, Devin Miller, the serial entrepreneur that has built several startups in a seven and eight figure businesses, as well as the founder and CEO of Miller IP Law, where we help startups and small businesses with their patents and trademarks. And today we have another great guest on the podcast, Vlad, and I'll probably kill his last name. So I'm just going to call him Vlad R and he can tell us how to pronounce it. But Vlad um, originally graduated with a degree in computer science and finance, and uh, I think moved to uh, Ukraine or the capital of Ukraine after graduation and worked for some electronics companies as a product manager for a period of time. Um, he then moved, or got some promotions, moved around a bit, um, and then he had one of his friends that was uh, doing an online store. He jumped over to his friend's online store, did, or learned how to do marketing and, and clear, creating funnels and doing growth and had, or had some success there. And they were profitable from day one. Afterwards, he went back to some big, or to a big company, got the good salary and the big, you know, good salary and the bonuses, saved up all the money he could, and then uh, decided he was going to go back out into the entrepreneurial world and do what he's doing today. So that with that as a very quick introduction to a longer story, welcome onto the podcast, Vlad. Yeah, thank you very much, Devin, for uh, inviting me to your podcast. I, I, I really appreciate your work. You, you are doing great. Uh, you are... Um, giving opportunity to people to uh, share their stories. And this is great because entrepreneurship, I think this is the, one of the best adventures in people's mm -hmm. life. And uh, everybody uh, can share their opinion. And uh, when we share the, uh, our journeys, everybody can learn from, the, from that. Because everyone faces uh, their unique problems and solve them. Uh, we mm -hmm. can each other and build community of entrepreneurs and uh you are doing great you you are i i really can't um show my appreciation i i want to donate to a channel uh you're you're so wonderful person hey well that's very kind words and i appreciate everything you said i don't know if it's all true but i'll certainly take the compliment <laughs> so now as we start kind of diving in, maybe with that as a, a great setup, it makes me feel all great. Now let's talk about your story and kind of how, you know, we ta I touched on this a little bit, but you graduated, we're coming out of, you know, university, had your computer science er, and finance degree and kind of walk us through, what did you do after you graduated? I worked for a couple of years for a plant manufacturing uh, aircraft engines. So I wrote, uh, I was writing a code uh, for the machines that uh, cut metal. And uh, this, this was a very boring and uh, detailed oriented work uh, that uh, didn't uh, give me a perspective, didn't give me uh, opportunity to grow, uh, to, to talk with people, to communicate, uh, to feel my um, impact on the mm -hmm. world. And uh, this is why I felt frustrating uh, at some point. And then I, I decided to jump uh, into a new city, a big city, a uh, me megapolis, I can say, because the population is 5 million people, a uh, mm -hmm. high density city with the uh, uh, traffic jams. Uh, mm -hmm. The average speed uh, in the city is about maybe in miles. It's like 15 miles or mm -hmm. 20 miles is average uh, so it's 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 kind of a problem to get from one point of the city to another point of the city and i will talk a little bit more about this uh during my um introduction to the my last startup because that was my pain problem <laughs> communicating commuting to uh different spots 
So you work. So you moved to the capital of Ukraine. And remind me, what is the capital? I guess I'm not Kiev. 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 Yeah. Okay. Now it's you see that it makes sense. Yeah, one one of the most beautiful cities in Europe. If you want to go to Europe, you can stay like for uh, three or four days in Kiev because one day is not enough for sure. Uh, it's it has a big uh, history. It's more than a uh, thousand years old, and um, a lot of buildings, a lot of uh, monuments and history, of course. And now it's quite developed and uh, a lot of entrepreneurs come there because uh, there are quite low taxes uh, mm. comparing to Europe. And uh, a lot of uh, companies, they open offices in Kiev because our people are hardworking, they are well-educated and, mm, and the prices are quite low. Mm. Uh, so, so, now, so, and you, so you fell in love with Kiev you you went to work there and you recommend everybody goes and visits and maybe work yeah, there for sure for one once in life for sure <laughs> all right i'll have to put that on my bucket list so now you're working in kiev you i think you worked for an electronics company as a product manager is that right yeah that's right that's right i moved and i was lucky i jumped right into the headquarters mm -hmm. they had an amazing program that uh uh, we're picking young talents from the universities, right from the universities. I was quite old, um, plus two years than average, but uh, still I was too young and uh, not experienced. And they taught me a lot. They mm. gave me, uh, like, they educated people, uh, new hires. They picked uh, new talents and educate them. And uh, they uh, promoted the, the, the best uh, people to product managers. And then I used this company as my uh, one more university because they gave uh, nice, the best ed education in industry, but they didn't pay well. So mm. I switched to the biggest company, to the um, leader of the market, and they had hunted me, uh, gave me a nice, uh, nice income, and I switched to, to the bigger company. And then at some point, you know, everybody with the entrepreneurial uh, mindset, they feel boring because uh, entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, they uh, want to, to hit the borders, uh, to, to grow really fast. And in the big company, you can't uh, grow really fast because uh, it's a market and market has shares. And you, if you have share of like 40% in the market, you can grow two times or three times. So, and one thing I thought, just to jump in, I thought was interesting, kind of as you're working with the big company, you mentioned, you know, because you kind of mentioned promoting, and excuse me, I'm going to sneeze, maybe, <coughs> all right, get it, you get it, some live action as part of the podcast, but so you're working with the bigger company, and you said, you know, they kind of are, are, were good with promoting and providing at least opportunities, and I think one of the ones you mentioned is uh, you were, you went and asked for a promotion, and they said that they, and you said, hey, they get, first of all, they gave you a promotion, but also gave you opportunity to kind of start working on e-commerce at the time, which yeah. is yeah. a bit of a, a newer platform or a newer venture yeah. for them, and you got to kind of get in on the ground floor, is that right? Yeah, that's right, totally correct. Uh, when I was working for this leader uh, company, uh, I felt that, uh, okay, I, I know everything about brick and mortar stores and everybody knows about that. And uh, the challenge for me was uh, to jump into e-commerce because uh, that was at some point 5% uh, of the revenue of the company. And it was growing uh, year to year, like five, six, seven, every year it was growing. and. I, I asked for uh, switching to that department, to e-commerce department, and mm. I learned a lot uh, by myself because nobody knew how to do a business in these uh, online channels. I mean, uh, in the company, uh, you had to reach out to experts, uh, to outside experts, uh, mm. not, not inside the company, but uh, to, to, to get information somewhere on the market. And that was exciting for me because I, I felt that I, I knew more than uh, my colleagues, my coworkers, and and I, I helped my company to um, to grow in some at some point mm. as 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 much they could, you know, to to change business processes is hard when you have big big uh, 
company with 10,000 employees. It's hard to change uh, something in logistics or in, um, in sales, for example. You can change uh, marketing very well, but all other departments are quite, um, quite resistant <laughs> to change. So now, so you were now you were and as you were exploring marketing, getting e-commerce kind of up and going for him, helping him to grow. Now I think that your friend was at the same time or similar time was doing his own online store, and he decided you know to jump over and do that with him with his startup. Is that right? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Uh, so how did you know? One question I was asking yeah. is, so how did you make that decision? Are you going from a company that, you know, has treated you well, give me opportunity to saying, hey, I just got to do my own thing or I want to try a startup. You know, was it an easy decision? You just made the jump one day or was it, you know, a little bit of weighing the pros and cons or how did you make, decide to make that jump? <laughs> uh, you know, I am an adventurous person, but I, I prefer to, uh, to sleep with the idea like for a month uh, to sleep like 30 nights and uh, mm. get to this idea and then uh, jump into a new project, a new uh, country. <laughs> mm. and, um, I'm easy going, but at the same time, I, I, I need just to think about it. I thought that, uh, well, mm, I, can, I can say that I will work for this company in a 10 years perspective and uh, I will grow as uh, maybe a, chief commercial officer and this is like top of of the career in this company and i need to wait for 10 years and at, at this point um i can jump into startup and mm. grow it in two or three years and uh, become um, you know to make to make uh, some some interesting project uh, that's exciting for me uh, to to grow really fast and not to uh, not to fight with the uh, departments inside the company, but to grow, you know, I, I'm excited to fight with competitors, not to fight with uh, my mm. colleagues or the other departments, mm. who is uh, very, very um, stable and uh, they don't want to change rapidly. So I, I decided to, to jump, uh, so I uh, saved my, all my bonuses, all my good salaries from big company. Mm. And I moved uh, from one apartment to another apartment, the cheaper one, uh, to save money because I, I I felt that I need to prepare for that cold water <laughs> from uh, mm. water. And yeah, I, I prepared myself. So, and so you, you save all the, comp you know, you take the 30 days, you save up some money to make sure you had some savings, you make the jump. And I think you said, you know, you worked with your friend, you learned a ton, you did marketing, you did, you know, created funnels, you figure out how to do sales and grew the company. You made it, pro you know, it was profitable on day one, you built a great or big brand, and then you got married and you needed more money. And so you ended up diving back into big business. Is that right? Yeah, that's totally correct. Um, I, I just want to start a little, um, to stop a little bit at, um, at my uh, this startup because uh, mm. it's it's kind of exciting and I think that everybody uh, will be interested to listen about it. Um, yeah, you know, uh, we, when we just started, we had uh, some uh, flow of uh, customers uh, mm. that went uh, through organic traffic, and mm. um, the first step was uh, to to create more wide funnel so i uh, i was responsible to uh, to get paid uh, traffic to our website this is this was my first step and when you don't know anything you just go into the courses uh, you, you you start studying you you become a student and uh, th this is uh, this is exciting part of the inter entrepreneurship because um, uh, you study all the time, all the new tools, and you feel that you uh, implement the newest tools on the market. And you don't have to um, buy a very, uh, when you work for a big company, you buy a very expensive tool and then utilize it for years. Uh, mm -hmm. It's smart, you know, to, to invest something and then to uh, utilize it till the end. And if you don't have investments, you just take the tool, use it, and then take another tool. This, that, that's exciting. 
we built oh, I think it is. now to kind of now we'll keep your story moving forward so you know you, you go back from the startup you go into hey i need more money i've got to you know m getting married i want a bit of that stability so you went back to the big you know the big company and if i remember as we talked a little bit before the mm -hmm. podcast it wasn't necessarily with the intent you're going intent you're going to stay at that big company for forever but you're going to go get some money you saved your bonuses up you found some inter you know interesting projects you you know you worked you built a company and you did that but then you with those bonuses with the money you saved as you're getting going it was kind of with the intent of going back and doing your own startup is that right yeah that's totally correct I um, I saved, as you mentioned, I saved my bonuses and my salaries uh, mm -hmm. in a big company because I didn't want to make uh, the second uh, mis mistake in my life. I didn't want uh, to be only employee for a startup. I wanted to be a, a co-owner. Uh, that's why I collected all, the, all my bonuses and I bought a share in that startup and I was co-owner. So now you get, so you, you say, you, you scrimp and you save and you say, okay, you know, now I'm going to jump back out. I'm going to go back into startup mode. You know, I have some of the funds I can afford it, you know, at least for a period of time. And you're always going to, you know, you, you can't afford to, to live off savings for forever, but you have that kind of that safety net for a period of time. So how was it jumping back here? How, do, I guess, first question is, is how did you identify as you're in the big company, as you're saving the bonuses, what was the right opportunity in which company you wanted to go in and be a co-owner and co-founder on to build again as a startup? Um, when uh, when you work for a big company, you have uh, uh, some time, some free time, because uh, you you work uh, your a schedule and all your free time you are free, you are totally free. So I went to the uh, conferences, I met uh, new interesting people, I talked about my experience, they shared uh, their experience, and we uh, I found one in, one interesting uh, my. A future partner uh, mm. who shared with me uh, his ideas and I said that well I can work for you um, without money I just your idea is uh, so great I just want to be a part of your idea and mm. I want to work uh, for you like search engine optimization specialist for free and just uh, let me be a part of your project and we started cooperating I felt that well, the project is growing, a project is exciting. Why I want to uh, join it uh, on the regular basis? That's mm. why I decided to uh, to buy the shares. Um, my future partner felt that I'm a nice partner, and uh, he he said, that, "Well, if you want to jump into my project, you can buy some shares, and we can start working together." Mm. So, so that you said, first of all, that's, you know, that's an interesting way and an exciting way to, you know, kind of get going saying, Hey, found a company I'm excited about. I want to work with them. You know, if they, even to get going, I'm willing to go and basically work for free to prove my value. And then as you're proving your value, you start to buy into the company, you buy into the vision and become a, you know, a co-founder or co-owner of the business as it's growing and as it's, you know, as it's getting bigger and because you see the, the vision of the opportunity. So now as you did that, you buy into it, you start to, I assume at some point, get a salary, start to make a, you know money off of the business as it grows. How has it gone since then? Is it, you know, I guess, first of all, I think the business is, you know, automatic roll or blinds and rollers and that for wind windows thought I'm automatically open and shut is that right yeah that's that's right uh, so we started our business that business is very complicated that's why I felt a passion about it because my brain needs uh, tasks and uh, that was a hard task to uh, to pro manage that business because we were working uh, with the products quite a complicated product it was smart uh, blind smart uh, curtains, all uh, smart uh, window treatments. Mm. Uh, and we didn't have actually the product. We had an idea. And uh, every our customer uh, reached out to us with uh, his idea. And we tried to implement a uh, customer's idea in the uh, apartment. Uh, so uh, we, we just had some general uh, concept of this product. And then our customer uh, said that, well, I, I want this type or this type, and we just customized our product to the needs of the customer. Uh, and we were buying materials, 
and we were buying materials across the world. So we were buying materials in China, in Turkey, in Poland, uh, of course, in Ukraine. And we ended up with a big uh, warehouse full of materials. And we ended up with a B2B business because um, we, uh, during our walk, we, uh, we talked with uh, different installators, with different small businesses, you know, businesses of one person or two per, uh, people and uh, they needed these components they needed uh, our warehouse and we decided why not why not to um to join this channel of sales b2b and uh, sell these materials and uh, in this way we decided to uh, create our own brand uh, because we didn't want to compete with uh, our competitors by price. We wanted to compete with our competitors by the service. Mm. And that was the idea of our business. No, I think that's cool. And that's, it sounds like a fun and exciting business. And certainly I could see why you'd want to jump into it and, and be a part of it. Well, as we start to wrap down the or wrap up the podcast, and we, you know, there's always so many more things and fun things that could be that we could talk about that we never quite have time. But I always ask two questions at the end of the podcast, so we'll jump to those now. So, first question is: is you know, throughout your journey, what was the worst business decision you ever made, and what did you learn from it? Um, I know definitely my worst business decision was to hire a very a talented, very nice employee for as a salesperson. Uh, we had hunted the, him from uh, one of uh, gorillas on the market. Uh, he was well, well educated, well, um, a really good professional, but he was not an uh, entrepreneur in his uh, spirit. He didn't share these uh, adventures. Uh, attitude to the to the work so he uh, expected to work uh, like in a big company from nine till six and that's all and he expected um, uh, you know to st uh, stable business processes and uh, he expected some a uh, fixed salary and he expected a different uh, different conditions for his work and he couldn't show uh, the, a nice result for us because uh, we couldn't give him uh, the tools he needed uh, to succeed. And uh, that was the worst uh, uh, decision because uh, we spent two months working with him. Our sales uh, struggled. Uh, we, uh, we had, um, at that point, we had almost zero profit during two months uh, and we didn't have salary. That, that were the, the worst months in our business. And then we fired him and we started uh, from the scratch. And that was uh, a reset, nice reset for a business. Well, no, it, it's certain, you know, and in, in dealing with the employees and finding, identifying the right person, I think there's, you kind of hit on it, even identifying the right person isn't just that they, are they talented or can do the job, but also do they fit with a firm culture? Do they have the work ethic? Are they going to be bought into the idea? And it can make a big difference as to how good of an employee they are, regardless of their skill set, with all those other things as far as working with the company. So I think that certainly makes sense and is a good lesson to learn. Second question I always ask is, um, now if you were talking to someone that's just getting into a startup or a small business, what would be the one piece of advice you'd give them? Uh, my uh, advice number one is uh, uh, be confident in yourself, uh, be positive, because you never know uh, what will happen in the future. You will definitely have your ups and downs and mm -hmm. Uh, you will never know where you will find your treasure and uh, plan um, a better plan in the closest future. Have a plan, but uh, be flexible and always be positive. Uh, never, ne never think that uh, something went wrong. Uh, even if something went wrong, it's a lesson and you need to, to study something. So ev on my uh, journey, I felt ups and downs all the time. And I couldn't expect that in one year uh, from the scratch, my start startup will take part in uh, international trade show. 
uh, I didn't uh, even know before in one month before this trade show. Uh, so you never know. Be be positive. Find the, uh, your ways and learn um, learn all, uh, all the time. I like that. I like the simple takeaway of just be positive because you're going to have a lot of good days and bad days as an entrepreneur and have that positive uh, mentality is going to make a big difference in whether you're successful or not. Well, appreciate you coming on to the podcast. Now, if people want to find out more about where to buy your uh, electronic blinds, your um, the automatic blinds, they want to reach out to you, they want to learn more, they want to be an investor, a customer, your next best friend, any or all of the above, what's the best way to connect with you? I think the best way is just email me. I'm open uh, to any conversation. I'm in you as a resident in Utah, and I want to build my network. Just reach out to me. Uh, I want to, to meet new people with any question. I can help. Uh, you can help. We can share our ideas. I can drive to your house and we, have, we can have a talk. And right under this uh, video, you can find uh, my email that Devin will, will share, I think. All right. Sounds perfect. Well, I appreciate you uh, your, uh, extending the invitation for people to be able to reach out to you via email and for you to also drive out to their house. So that's awesome. So, well, thank you for coming on. It's been a thank pleasure. You. Now, for all of those listeners, um, if you have your own journey to tell and you'd like to be a guest on the podcast, feel free to go to inventivejourneyguest.com. We'd always love to hear your journey. If you're a listener, make sure to click subscribe on, the, on your podcast listener so you get notifications as all our awesome episodes come out. And last but not least, if you ever need help with patents or trademarks, feel free to reach out to us at Miller IP Law by going to strategymeeting.com. And we'd love to chat with you and help you out with that. Thank you again, Vlad. Appreciate you coming Thank on. You, it's man. been a pleasure. And wish the next leg of your journey even better than the last. Thank you.